we make valves that are both internally and externally equalized. It has nothing to do with equalizing the high and the low side pressures, which can be confusing in the terminology. It has to do with where we're sampling evaporator pressure because we need that feedback to help tell the valve what to do. Remember the bulb opens it, the closing spring does what? Closes it, right? And then the evaporator pressure helps to close it as well. We can drill a passageway from the outlet fitting of the valve to the underside of the diaphragm and we provide an internal passageway to sample that pressure. That's what we show on the left. We can also provide a valve that has a third connection on it in addition to the inlet and the outlet and we can sample that pressure wherever we would, you got a better one there? Look at that. I got a lightsaber now. Thank you, sir. Here, we have the external equalizer that we can route over to wherever we want on the suction line. Whereas here, we're constrained with sampling that pressure at the outlet of the valve. There's applications for both styles. Now, another thing that's important is mounting the bulb because the bulb is going to help drive the valve open. We've got recommendations on where we say that bulb ought to be mounted. If you look at the circumference of the suction line with reference to an analog clock, I've oftentimes heard eight and four o'clock positions as good reference points. I've also had good results at nine and three. And if the bulb is relatively small, with respect to the size of the suction line, which is gonna be oftentimes the case, you need to take these into account. And this also shows where we would typically mount the bulb and then also shows the routing for the external equalizer. And we show that being tapped into the top of the suction line to keep it being fouled with debris. Does that make sense? Sure does. And then here,